Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. I know I'm a little bit late to the party on reviewing this game, but I've got some free time away from reviewing new games, so I thought I might as well review some of the older games that I missed. And yeah, I did pick up Mortal Kombat X, but I don't really know why. I'm terrible at fighting games and I don't find them very fun, which is why I won't be reviewing it. Sorry. Anyway, enough about that, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. I was personally a huge fan of the little Captain Toad minigames in 3D World, as I thought they were a pretty cool diversion from the main game. They're short and sweet, but fun and surprisingly difficult at times. So when I heard that they were expanding this idea into its own game, I was pretty excited. And when I finally got my hands on it, I put it on my shelf for four months and never really played it. Because I'm an idiot. The bottom line is, I'm finally playing it and I'm finally reviewing it. So anyway, let's ask the question. With this game being as small and simplistic as it looks to be, is it really just as worth picking up as some of the bigger Nintendo games? There's only one way to find out. Let's get into Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. The story in Treasure Tracker centers around Toad, who is on a quest to save Toadette from some big dumb bird. And that's pretty much as simplistic as a story can get for a game, but for this kind of game it works. If there's anything that was clear to me while playing this game, it's that this game was created with simplicity and minimalism in mind. Quite like an Apple product, this game was almost aggressively stripped of all the kinds of fat you'd normally see in a Nintendo game. To the point where you can't even jump. So I couldn't really imagine a game like this to be dripping in complex lore like Mass Effect or anything. Like I said, the story's simplistic, but if anything, it just reflects the rest of the game's simplicity. As superfluous and minor as these little tweaks may sound, they surprisingly really change the way you play. The aim of the game is to reach the star at the end of every level, as well as having the option to find free hidden diamonds as well. Like I said, it sounds bare bones, but it works. It makes the game seem just as much of a puzzle game as it does a platformer. Having to figure out how to traverse environments like this by just walking is surprisingly difficult sometimes, and it feels really unique to play. Plus, on top of collecting everything, there's a bonus challenge that comes with every level too, which forces you to look at each level in an entirely different way. Whether it's collecting a certain amount of coins, completing levels by only moving the scenery three times, kill all the enemies, don't alert a single enemy, it's pretty fun, and going back to complete them all makes the game feel pretty lengthy as a result. Speaking of which, that's another thing about Nintendo that I love. It makes you feel rewarded by giving you more stuff. Most games nowadays prefer you to buy everything, things that before you'd really have to earn and unlock yourself. And as most games have done away with this in favour of DLC, if anything Nintendo only does it more. Just like in 3D World, I was staring at the credits an hour into the game, thinking, oh man, what? The end already? Oh, what a load of baloney. Wait, 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 what's this? Episode 2? Episode 3? Bonus levels? And all of these levels are bigger, longer, and way more difficult than the ones before? Huh. I don't think I'm done with this game after all. Just like in 3D World, the game doesn't really begin until you think it's all over, and that is what I really love about Nintendo. They care. The way they put those little surprises in their games is like opening a present on Christmas Day. And that's how games should be. When the game just quadruples in size, like I was just saying, you really feel like you've won that, like you've earned that privilege of having more of the game to play. It's honestly like you've been awarded a medal or something, you know, like, yeah, you're such a winner. Here are some more levels because you've won them. You're a winner. You deserve them. You've earned them. Here they are because you're such a cool winner guy. I guess. Whereas, like I said, in most other games, it's like, just give us the money and we'll give it you. I don't know, I don't really care. Just fork over the money and you just get it for nothing. Just for no reward. No, you don't, earn, you don't need to earn it or win it. Just have it right now. I don't really care. And seeing as this game is so super simplistic, so too is this review. I mean, that is literally all there is to the game. There's some little mini games where you can get coins every now and again. There was this weird Luigi illusion that I don't even know how I found. The game just started up with this. I don't even know. And there were some other little timed mini games too, but aside from that, nothing much. 
And yet the game's still awesome. I suppose in a sense I could see why that would put somebody off this game, as it does seem like the kind of game that would serve better on the 3DS to play in short bursts, but it's still pretty fun. It's a genuinely challenging puzzle game that has new surprises in almost every level. One of the most charming, colourful and happiest games I've played so far this year, Captain Toad is yet another reminder why I still love Nintendo.